What excites me about blockchain in the financial in industry is essentially the power of decentralization, the power of decentralization to reshape business models. Oh, wow, what excites me about blockchain? What doesn't excite me about blockchain? Um, I would have to say the, the ability for it to truly transform our day-to-day -day lives. Um, these days, when we work with our clients and explain to them what this technology could enable for from their per business perspectives. We're looking at its ability to improve operational efficiencies by decreasing costs. And we're also looking at the ability for it to look at new business models. How can companies make money in a different way using this technology? So from those two buckets, I think the, I think the, the opportunity is endless. In the supply chain industry, I find blockchain quite exciting because it's probably the first technology that really enables and drives corporations to collaborate. Uh, blockchain becomes effective when multiple corporations collaborate and share data. And through my career in supply chain, that's been one of the biggest challenges is getting multiple corporations or a consortium of companies to work together to create one data set. Instead, in the past, they've had multiple data sets and inconsistencies between the data sets. Putting everything on one shared blockchain creates consistency, creates value, and really drives organizations to work together in a way that they haven't in the past. So what excites me about blockchain is it is the next wave of a process that's been going on for some time, and that's the componentization uh, that started with the Industrial Revolution, went through um, all the changes through a, a century, and now we're talking about the componentization of business models, uh, particularly the ability to federate a business model within a network and allow multiple people to utilize what you are best at, what you're uniquely gifted at doing, and this is going to open up uh, a lot of change in our society, you know, and everything from government to um, the way we think of the firm, what the nature of the firm is, uh, and it's going to radically affect supply chains and finance. So what I find exciting about blockchain and healthcare is I, I've got a, a pretty solid, I, I got a solid belief that uh, we are heading to a point where care and cures are going to be done on what I, I look at as an individualized basis or you know, a sample size of one, common thing called n of one or n equals one. And so each cure is, is a personalized therapeutic. Each um, care interaction with a care provider, whether it's a general practitioner or a specialist, is going to be done on a very individualized basis. And I, I see blockchain as an enabler for that to happen. What excites me about blockchain is the fact that we might be able to actually create a self-sovereign society, which is basically where people are able to actually take control of their own information and are able to manage it and share it with whoever they like. So we no longer have big organizations and corporations having all of our information, but rather we'd be able to have it for ourselves and give it and share it with whoever we'd like. Where I see the current state of blockchain technology in, in healthcare is, I. I think it's in the experimental stage. I, I, I think there are a lot of very interesting projects um, built on a variety of different emerging blockchain platforms that are still um, that are still in the early stage of, of development. It's, it's not clear which platform or platforms are uh, the best, the most suitable, the most scalable, um, and, and what we've yet to see emerge. So I think in terms of the state of blockchain in our industry, the, it's still very early. Um, like the internet, most people don't yet understand what it is or what you can do with it. And so uh, in, in the internet, uh, the very beginning, we thought, oh, this is great. Newspapers put you know, classified ads on the internet, and people used it mostly for email if they used it for much. Um, and then it wasn't until we started to get to online shopping that we actually really started seeing things happen or social um, uh, networks started really seeing mass adoption and people understanding what you could do by, by being able to instantly connect people on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. Blockchain itself is still, I would say, in its infancy. 
Um, there's a lot of work to be done on regulation. There's a lot of work to be done on the platforms or protocols um, to make it really much more efficient. And I think the biggest piece is blockchain's evolution requires more education. The, the business world needs to understand how blockchain fits into their organization. And that's not a matter of them understanding how crypto works and how blockchain works, but how they can actually apply it. I still think blockchain is very much a nascent technology, but it is maturing. Um, if you look at where we were two years ago, where companies were building proof of concepts, just trying to test out the technology, seeing whether it solved a problem, we're now seeing our clients build more and more pilot solutions, uh, minimal viable products, and even products that are ready to move into production stages. So I would say as we see the hype of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin decrease, the more serious players uh, about, about this technology are surfacing. So they're really looking for other applications of what blockchain can enable. And um, so from that standpoint, it's definitely maturing, but we still have a long way to go. So blockchain technologies are still very much evolving. Uh, I think we have a lot of the essential pieces to, to, to build almost any kind of application. They're in need of further refinement. Um, uh, I think they're also somewhat in need of a shakeout. I think sometimes we have 10 ways to solve a problem when we really could get, way, get away with two or three. Um, I think we always want more than one. I very much believe in optionality and I believe in competition. Uh, I, the question is, will it end up looking more like you know, the internet where there's very small numbers of standards that allow us to build something big? Or will it mo look more like, say, programming languages where there's hundreds of programming languages out there, but there's even dozens of major programming languages, which be creates kind of a Tower of Babel problem when you're a developer. Um, so I, I think one of those challenges is how do we find the sweet spot and kind of condense them in the right way without, w while still encouraging innovation and experimentation on the periphery, uh, but really focus a lot of the efforts around a core set. In the supply chain world, I look at blockchain applications to food, to pharmaceuticals, to the medical industry, and, and to consumer goods. Um, some of those areas maybe less so in the consumer goods industry, but in the medical and pharmaceutical and food industries are highly regulated. Regulations today are uh, built around technologies that have existed in the past and haven't evolved in order to um, address the capabilities of uh, modern society. And that's typically the case. Governments lag industry and in industry innovates and as they do governments need to catch up on that. I think one of the key things is really educating your governments on what you're doing and where you're going and involving them at an appropriate level to develop those new regulations. When I think about the areas that need to mature in blockchain, the, the, the things that need to, the first thing that needs to mature is what we call a blockchain. Um, there are religious wars um, in this technology space that are like none I've ever seen before. Um, and they're pointless, they're useless, and they really serve no purpose. Um, I think they do a disservice to the space. The areas that require more maturing within blockchain, um, I think for one, governance. We do have to establish um, how we will be operating with each other, especially from a consortium standpoint. Um, two, interoperability. There are many, there are different blockchain platforms and protocols in which we build solutions on. At some point in time, we have to think through how will these different blockchain solutions speak to each other. Um, don't go full on blockchain because this could potentially scare the end user. I would say take a phased approach. Start with only an element of the solution um, that uses blockchain and slowly build up on that. Uh, you know, if we look at the um, businesses that thrived on the internet, uh, a lot of them didn't go fully from call center to online bookings. Uh, they ran a hybrid of taking phone calls and taking online bookings until they slowly phased out call centers and making them internet only. Don't try to take people too far too fast. Um, people can only adapt to change as fast as they can absorb the information and learn to uh, and learn to address it, um, and then new things don't change 
unless uh, they don't get widely adopted, unless they are as good as the things that are already there and provide something you didn't get from what's already there. After the hype cycle, you need to get into the details, really understand the value proposition, really examine what the trends are that this technology can address. You really shouldn't uh, base it in what does this displace. It's really about, given a technology this, how does it change our future business? And start to work backwards to how the technology will change your future business. That paradigm, I think, is the appropriate approach. This technology fundamentally is one where you are rethinking your orthodoxy. So keeping an open mind is possibly the most critical. And the other thing I say always is like first principles thinking. Like people generally when they see a new technology like let's say AI or let's say other, <coughs> other uh, technology ad advancements, it's always been how can you make what we do today a little better, a little faster, a little che cheaper, a little more beautiful. But it's not always that. Stop and think how could you do this entire thing differently. Go back to what are you actually trying to achieve? What is the outcome or what is the experience that you're trying to deliver to your customer? And start from there. And don't start with blockchain. Like that's not the point. Blockchain is one of several technologies that will impact the future of how we live our lives. Don't start there. Start with what you are trying to reinvent and think whether there's a role of decentralization in that experience. Could it be done better? Could it be done in a different way? And then what does that mean in terms of change of the business model as you do that function? I think the biggest thing I've learned is many organizations today are so focused on applying blockchain for the sake of applying blockchain. Understand blockchain is a tool. It's a set of programming languages. It creates a foundation or a platform that people can apply to solve problems, but it can't solve every problem. And you really need to understand what it does well and what it doesn't do well. Um, I have a quick checklist that I use, and my checklist really is built around sharing of data between multiple organizations. If you have a problem that you want to solve with blockchain, evaluate how you share data. And if that's only shared internally, a database may be a better technology. If you're sharing data across multiple organizations, then blockchain tends to be a great tool for that.